so 36 seconds for every model is I think pretty cool and if you did this on a laptop it would probably take you a lot longer. Then finally the notebooks are what you can use to interact with your data using your compute. So this is completing the trifecta. Good morning everyone and welcome to a new video. This is Yulia. I make videos about my life in tech, my background in data science and teaching you tips and tricks about data science and technology that I have from my experience and my career so far. Today's video is going to be a follow-up on the Azure series that I've started called Data Science on Azure 101. And today I'm going to explain what Azure Machine Learning is, give you a bit of an overview of the platform, why would you use it, why do I use it, what are some best practices, and getting familiar with the terminology around it. It's a bit of an explanation about why you should do data science on the cloud in general, and for specifically on Azure, since I currently work for Microsoft and I do these videos as a hobby in my free time, but I've gotten to experience the platform and I use it with a lot of my clients. So I think a lot of people have questions about it and it's useful to give a quick overview. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Part one, why do we need to do data science in the cloud? Of course, you've probably already heard of cloud services from Amazon, Azure, Google, and other independent services as well. A lot of companies are moving to the cloud and there's a lot of demand for people who can work with these technologies in different technological fields, including, of course, also data science. So first of all, by cloud, we mean compute and data storage and other sort of equipment that is stored somewhere else by another entity, for example, Azure that is owned by Microsoft. And the person who uses those cloud services doesn't have to actively manage though that sort of infrastructure by themselves, you get to focus on the very specific things that you want to do without focusing on the infrastructure and the other management details that make you able to do what you want to do in the first place. This is also a really helpful platform to start with. If you don't have a very good laptop for data science or you don't want to buy one, you can just get an Azure subscription and then you pay as you go, meaning you only pay for as much as you use. Uh, you don't have to get anything up front. We call that the initial cost of ownership. So say a company doesn't have to buy a whole server just to get started with some data science projects. They can just experiment on the cloud and scale up as much as they need to. And when they're done with it, they can shut it off and it's like they don't own it anymore. That makes it a bit more flexible. And as a student as well, if you want to start you're probably not going to invest in this insane infrastructure just so you can get used to the practices and get some experience. So it's a great tool for beginners, but it's also a platform that has a lot of features for enterprise users and companies who have a lot of people working together that just need to be more structured and organized. It scales both ways. Which brings us to Azure Machine Learning. That is the data science solution that is offered on the Microsoft Cloud and it's kind of this portal where a lot of people can do their data science work together, not just data scientists, but also data engineers or people who work with the, the data sets or the data sources and preparing that sort of information. Also people who want to visualize the data, people who want to maintain the security of everything and the access and governance that people have, and the data scientists or statisticians who create the actual models. All of those people together can work on this one platform, sending all their requests into the cloud to be processed by whatever kind of engine they choose and using a lot of extra features to get more insights and more value out of their data. Sounds pretty good. So today I'm going to break down all the parts of Azure Machine Learning and show you how you would use them. All right, so I think it's best to explain it as I'm also showing you around the portal so you know where everything is and how it works. You can create an Azure Machine Learning resource from the Azure portal directly uh, with the create a resource button here and I'll link some tutorials on how to do that. You just need to have a subscription on Azure which you can get as a student with some credits loaded up or you can get it from your company or you can get it on your own and just um, pay for the services that you need. So once you have an Azure Machine Learning resource, you can also go to ml.azure.com and that will automatically log you in into the Azure Machine Learning portal. Now, if you have different workspaces for different projects, which is recommended, 
from this button here, you can uh, choose which workspace you want to work in. So now I have a demo environment just to show you guys around. If you look at this big white page, basically there's a lot of features that you can do in just this web page. This will be your home where you can get everything done or you can connect this service to your favorite IDE or software development tool and then you can code from there by just sending your request to the cloud, whichever way you prefer. The website is usually better for people who want more uh, user interaction and clicking things. And you can use the code environment if you want to make more robust software engineering projects and you want to have classes and you like that way of work better. You can also work from Jupyter Notebooks in this website or separately. So there's again a lot of ways to do depending on what your background is. Now there are some essential parts that make this work and a few essential concepts if you will that you need to be familiar with starting with compute, data sets, and then notebooks. Compute is the engine that powers all your computations. So if you run a hello world script, it has to run somewhere. Normally that would run on your laptop. If your laptop is better and stronger and usually heavier, it will run faster and more optimized. Of course, for a hello world script, that wouldn't really make a big difference. But if you're reading a really, really big data set and you want to do it all at the same time, having a better laptop is usually better. However, when the cloud comes in, that doesn't matter so much. Your laptop is just the entry point you have on which you see your code and you press buttons and you type in things, but the real computations and the real engine work is happening in the cloud. So from Azure Machine Learning Compute, you can choose how strong do you want that cloud engine to be? How big and heavy do you want the laptop that you're sending this to to really be? Then we have your data sets. To do any sort of machine learning projects, you usually need data. You can work with a CSV file or an Excel file or a text file or any sort of document you want, or you can work with a table and directly connect to a database. You've probably tried these different methods as well before. In Azure Machine Learning, you can connect to different data sources that are already on Azure or maybe even on different clouds and then these connections are done automatically and you can trace how the data comes in. You can create protocols or pipelines for ingesting the data and editing it and making it good enough to use. And you can directly access it from your data set registry. This makes it a little easier for everyone to have the right access for the data to be there in the version that you want it to be in and to trace things more easily. Then finally, the notebooks are what you can use to interact with your data using your compute. So this is completing the trifecta. Uh, the notebook is a way that you can write your code that makes it easy to read and easy to share with other people. But of course, you can also not use notebooks and just create your own code in your favorite IDE and then connect that to Azure Machine Learning. Depends what you prefer to work with. So with these three main items, you can do the data science work that you're probably used to. You just have more governance around it and a more fighting power without having to break your back carrying your laptop around. So if I show you an example, I start with the compute page. Here you can create the compute that you want. And that's basically a virtual machine. You can have it have CPU or GPU. You can choose the storage abilities that it has, the RAM, the number of cores, which is really useful for parallelizing. And you can also see how much it will cost per hour that it runs. So you pay for what runs and when you stop it, you don't have that compute anymore. You can have a lot of different options and you can choose just the perfect one for the task that you have. Um, but that's not necessary all the time. You can also have a general purpose compute and that's the same as having your one laptop for everything. But the power of this is that when you train your model, you need a certain kind of power. And when you write a hello world script, you don't. So you can make it more modular and use different hammers for different types of nails. In the notebook tab, I already have some folders in here with all my um, notebooks that I'm using. This is from a GitHub page that I have. You can integrate it from there, of course, and then just run these different notebooks on the compute that you created. And the data that I use can either be from a file that I have in this folder 
or like I explained, it can be from data sets, which makes it a bit more streamlined. You start with data stores, which is basically the location that all your data is going to come from. That can be a data lake usually. And from that data store, you can create different data sets. So you can think of this as a folder and each data set is a different file in that folder that are all in the same um, group, but can be different. So for example, from a blob storage, I can have a lot of different data sets that come from it because I have a tabular file, maybe I have some images that I want in a different data set and they can all be used for different projects or for the same project in different versions. So if someone makes a change to a data set, you can use the new version of it or you can go back to the previous one before the changes. It's kind of like GitHub for data. Then we have the experiment tab. This is where you keep track of the experiment you've been running. So if I create a model that can cure diabetes, I kind of want to know what types of things I tried out. Maybe I did different types of models. Maybe I used different parameters. And in the end, I can compare the results of all the runs and choose the best one. Uh, when you try a lot of things locally, it can get a little messy if you keep tweaking and changing things until you finally get a version but you can't remember what configuration did you have for five results ago, to give an example. This way you have a very clear overview of everything you tried, who ran it, if you're working on the same project with different people. You can even have a competition to see who can achieve the best precision by trying the different parameters and tweaking things around, and you can have a leaderboard for it. That's just for a bit of fun, but it's also very helpful for projects where a lot of people are using the same resources and you want to make sure you keep a clear overview and everything. And the last thing I want to show is the designer. This is a drag and drop tool that is very useful to get started with data science if you don't have a lot of coding experience or if you just want to quickly try something out before you start coding the whole solution. What this does is it uses a lot of pre-built models that you can drag in. For example, you can use sample data sets and then just drag it here and that will automatically connect to that data set without you having to create the code. You can use different data transformations like add a row, clip values, edit metadata, whatever it is that you want to do. Feature selection, uh, model training, for example, you can train a clustering model and you can do a lot of things without having to, again, know how to write the code for it. So if you just wanna get started and see the flow of a complete model. So in this example, we start with a diabetes data set. We normalize the data, split it, and then you see that the first part of the split goes to train it, and the second part goes for scoring the model. And all these little arrows show the entire flow of the data through this program. But again, there is no code. This whole thing made of, I don't know, 10 blobs is a, a trained module that can be deployed somewhere and you can have it be in production. And when it gets new data, it will give you new results. So that's a really quick and dirty way to get started with uh, data science. And lastly, we have automated ML, which has a similar concept to the designer in a way that you don't need to code for it but it's a bit more complex and something that a lot of data scientists who can code would want to use as well. What it does is you give it data and you give it a goal and it tries out a lot of different models to find the best one for the criteria that you gave it. So instead of creating the code or looping through a lot of different algorithms yourself, it kind of tries to find the best match automatically. It is called automated ML. So you can see all the models, for example, that it tried and the different accuracy rates that it got. And if you sort it, you see that the stack ensemble was the best one for this task. And you can also see how long all these models took to try. So 36 seconds for every model is, I think, pretty cool. And if you did this on the laptop, it would probably take you a lot longer. And in here you have your endpoints. So once you've created a model and everything's perfect, you've solved the solution that your boss asked you to fix or the project that you were working on. And now you can create an endpoint, which is kind of an API that you can call to get the results of the model. So instead of people always sending you data and you always running your code and telling them what the results are, you can just 
create this API that the people can make calls to themselves and get the results back. And this is also hosted somewhere in the cloud on a inference cluster so that it's reliable, it will always stay up, it's not going to have issues by not being available when people need it, depending of course on how much you need it to be online all the time or if you just want to turn it on at different times and get a few results in and then stop it. Again, flexibility is key. So that was a quick overview of Azure Machine Learning and how you can make a data science project there. Of course, there's a lot more details about everything that I showed, but I just wanted to do a quick 10 minute video uh, introducing you to the topic and I'll break down all the different parts and different videos as well in the future. Hope you found this useful and if you want to get started with trying things out, I'll put some links and tutorials in the description so you can uh, experience it for yourself. Good luck with all your projects and I hope you're learning a lot from this series. Bye!